right, the people have spoken. Y'all wanted a video. This is homework eight. And looking at the first problem, this looks very complicated, but it's actually not. It's just adding, subtracting. So they give you a starting point here, the 68, 684.1. And then you just do what the table tells you to do. If it's positive, you add. If it's negative, you subtract to go through to answer all of these. <clears throat> and so as you can see, what I do first is I just fill in the table. So I started at 684.1, then I added 1.3, added 0 0.6, added 1, subtracted anything that's a negative, and I fill the table out. Then it asked me for this L of 5. Well, I just simply look to see where I'm at, month 5, that value there. Then it says the net change for the year. So the net change would be found by taking the ending minus the starting. So that's that value right there. The highest water level, I just look for the highest, which is the 687. And then the lowest, which is this value, happens in this month. So once again, this looks complicated, but once you figure out, you're just doing net change based on adding or subtracting. All right, we have a table here. We're going to estimate this integral. Because we don't have a function, what we're going to do is we're just going to find the lower value and the upper value using Riemann sums. So I multiply by 2. Why? Because it looks like that change is by 2. And I get my lower, I get my upper, and then I finish this out by finding the average. Um, this is just simply getting you used to writing integrals. That's all you're doing is writing the integrals. Remember that dt is the same as the change in t. Remember that was your width of your interval because you're going to see when you take an antiderivative the dt disappears because this width is going to zero, getting smaller and smaller. And just be careful, this says it's in minutes, so for the first hour zero to sixty. And when you work something like this, say f of t dt, this is the derivative. So this would actually be given in what liters per minute. But then when you work this and you get an answer back to the original function, that's why you're back in liters. Uh, and that's what this is kind of asking you is, can you figure out um, this actual rate? So it says the rate of change is in decibels per meter. Then if the rate is in decibels per meter and I work this out, I should get decibels, which I do not see here at all. None of the above. This is getting you to understand the power rule. Whenever you have a power, you simply add one, one plus one, one plus one, this had a power of 5, 5 plus 1, 5 plus 1. The 3, think about, you could actually write this if you wanted a power. Couldn't you write it as that? Because anything to the 0 power is 1. But what I do is I just memorize anything with just a number alone. You put the variable on it because when you take the derivative of 3t, you get 3. Just be careful things like this moving anything from the denominator up becomes a negative exponent, adding one, changing the square roots to a one half. Now be careful here because students want to always pull that seven out front. I always pull the fraction out and then I actually do the antiderivative to this x to my negative three. Same thing just going on here. This is like x to the 1, so it's 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. x to the 2, 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1. x to the 3, 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1. I mean, you'll, you'll get these power rules down pretty, pretty quickly. You just have to be careful with stuff like this because now you have a negative exponent. And that's how that became positive. So this negative went right here. I brought the exponent up, and it became a negative exponent, and then I had a negative 1, negative and a negative became positive. <clears throat> Here is a number. What do you do? You put a variable on it.
So 1x, 2x, and so on. Uh, this gets you into the trig functions. Just be careful to look for when you have more than an x inside, which we do on all of these, that you need to do the 1 over k. This is what you did in your group work. These problems are tricky because students get messed up. It's asking you to find the derivative. And there will be a reason for this later because we will actually marry derivatives and antiderivatives. So you remember the derivative, you bring the power down and subtract one. That three would cancel. Same thing here. This is the derivative. And now here it's telling you to take the antiderivative and see if you get what you started with back. Notice the plus c is that 7 right there. That's what we keep call, you know, everybody keeps saying, I don't know what the plus c is. It's, it's just a constant. Whatever, we don't know what that number is, whatever constant is actually there. All right, the rest of them should be straightforward where you're just continuing to use these rules. Practice makes perfect. Y'all got this.